Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. This is The World This Week with us, Anne Bagamuri of the International New York Times, and Elisabeth Moutet of the Sunday Telegraph, mm -hmm. Pierre Aski of uh, Rue 89, France's leading digital newspaper, and uh, Issa Gul Sert, uh, independent journalist who's written most recently on those Turkish elections we were talking mm. about just before the break. Let me ask you this now. Ask me. Who <laughs> leaked that conversation? Because it's very sensitive mm. stuff about st military strategy over Syria. I mean, the prime minister's right to be upset that that got leaked. What, who leaked that? If I knew, <laughs> I would tell you. I know who they're going to, they're starting to, to, to talk about and to blame. It's, of course, the cleric Fethullah Gulen. Uh, the movements of that rival cleric based out of the United States. Exactly. And that, that they're, and also outside forces that the prime minister and the government like to basically push on. But the thing which was very interesting was that the ministry released a statement in which they said, I mean, they, they're talking about national security, but there was a line in there, I had to write it, where it says, the rings of treason behind this act are enemies of our state and nation. Now, for a government that's kind of been known in order to put the army, to weaken the army, this sounds like a pretty tough, army like you know but rhetoric. it's someone in the room right i don't know i really have no no answer to that all right we have uh, one uh, uh remark uh, but one prediction uh, from a correspondent there sunday won't mark an end to political turmoil just the end of the beginning uh and i suppose uh, that's true and back at murray at this point we're heading towards these lo these local elections in turkey and the prime minister's made him into a referendum about himself. Is that going to work or backfire is the question? Oh, that's a very good question. I'm not as, I'm not an expert on Turkish politics. I just, um, from observing this man and especially lately, it's pretty clear that, and, and I thought it was very interesting what you said, he's not concerned about his legacy because he thinks he doesn't really need to. He's going to be there forever. It kind of reminds me of Mrs. Thatcher back in the day. She was much more concerned with the here and now than I she was with, so, well, in any event, it's a megalomaniacal mm. view of the world. And so somebody like that is going to make everything about himself. And when you start doing that, I don't think you're upholding the principles of democracy, even though you might say you're the head of a democratic government. What you're looking at is someone who wants to impose his will, who wants to control the chat. Um, you know, democracy is messy and democracy yells and screams and you have to let it happen and he is clearly not willing to have that happen no i think i think wh whichever commentator said that the elections will be the the beginning uh, it won't be the the end but it'll be the, the the beginning of something it might very well be the beginning of erdogan as uh, a self-perpetuating head of state uh, he's term limited in terms of being prime minister but he can run for president there's been talk of him overturning the term limits mm -hmm. i don't know how exactly he's going to do that but overturning them so he could run in the parliamentary elections and be prime minister again. I would really like, you know, to take issue with the comparison with Margaret Thatcher, who stepped down after her own party decided that they didn't like her as prime minister. She'd won elections, there were no term limits. And really, we're talking about somebody who's basically an aspirant dictator and would like to play the same thing that Putin and Medvedev termed and really take it back on Margaret Thatcher. I feel insulted. <laughs> I, you know, Margaret Thatcher eliminated the Greater London Council because the head of the Greater London Council disagreed with her, and she figured that that was probably the a good enough reason. The city of Paris eliminated the Conseil de Paris, and right. they had a mayor. Oh. Really, we're not Please. talking about the same thing. We're not. We are to, seriously. Uh, let, me, let, me, the, uh, let me ask Piraski a question. This here is on this. Thatcher arrangement syndrome going on here. <laughs> we could talk about Mrs. Thatcher later. Piraski, uh, we're Three we're looking years. at, and we heard like the statement out of. Um, Washington that trying to ban Twitter is the equivalent of book burning in the 20th century and all this. But are, are we looking at this through Western eyes? This is, I mean, we saw at the rally, it's huge numbers of people who've been coming out. All the people in the heartland and places like Anatolia, they don't read this the same way. Yes, but uh, if you look at the recent history, people who banned uh, Twitter or the internet uh, <laughs> have, have finished 
pretty badly and 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 even if what you say is true that that the the the, the bulk of supporters of uh, Erdogan uh, don't care about uh, they're not twitter uh, fans and they're not uh, twitter users uh, but i think it's a very bad sign for a man who was described only recently remember what was said about him a couple of years ago he was the most powerful man in the middle east he was uh, the, 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 the model yeah. the model the role model for the, the Arab revolutions, uh, the, the modern Islam, Islamists Islam, 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 who, who yep. uh, behaved in a democratic way and so on. And so the, the, the change of mood, the change of, of situation in, in just a couple of years is amazing. And I think there is panic there. Uh, what comes after that is very hard to predict because he's going probably to do well in the elections. Uh, the opposition is, is not very organized mm -hmm. and not very capable at the moment to offer an alternative, it's split. Uh, so what's going to happen in, in Turkey with a, a weakened leader who doesn't care about the starting a war in Syria uh, for political reasons or banning the internet? I don't think it's a very All good right, sign. Final Just question on this. Very, very quickly, what I want to say is that yes, the heartland, yes, the Anatol Anatolia are, are following Erdogan, but at the same time, this is not about Erdogan, this is not about YouTube, this is not about Twitter, this is about freedom of expression. So this is not about an election, this is about your choice as a human being to be able to get the information and put on the information. That's it. Also, and, and do you see, just, uh, uh, sorry to bring back Mrs. Thatcher to this discussion, <laughs> but do you see uh, Mr. Erdogan being tipped overboard by his own camp if those elections don't go well this weekend? Uh, I'm sitting right next to... No, no, I'm kidding. But, uh, <laughs> um, I have no power in Turkey whatsoever. And not at all in England either. <laughs> neither, but anyways, but uh, we... I don't know. I, I'm very curious about what's going to happen on Sunday, really, because it's, it's very hard to predict. But it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. But the other thing is, I think book burning... At, in the in the Middle Ages was far more efficient than trying to ban the internet. Mm, absolutely, you Very cannot true. ban the internet. End of story. You can't. It's you almost mean, it's almost a rookie mistake that he made. Well, oh, yes, uh, they all do. One it. of many. Yeah. One of, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll see Sunday night when we uh, get those election returns. Turkey's prime minister may have turned local elections into a national referendum on his own performance. Here in France, the voters were unprompted uh, by. The ruling socialists, the socialists expected to lose many a city hall on Sunday. Insiders describe an anxious and ominous mood this past Wednesday at the weekly cabinet meeting, the last before the reshuffle that could follow as early as Monday. Among those who could be clearing out his desk, Prime Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault, who when the polls closed last Sunday, called for what's known here as a Republican front for mainstream left and right parties to drop out in the second round to bar the far-right National Front from winning, that's proving a harder and harder sell. Even broadsheet of record Le Monde in a front-page editorial headlined the death knell of the Front Républicain, the Republican Front, wrote that the dike has burst and it's high time to scrap that strategy. Do you agree, Pierre Aski? Uh, yes, because I think uh, the, the Prime Minister uh, tried to use the rise of the National Front as a, as a, uh, to, to, to scare the left-wing voters who uh, voted with their feet by staying at home and not going to vote. And I think this was uh, a little bit too big and too obvious. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the end, the National Front will end up with a lot of elected uh, members of local councils, but only uh, a, a few towns uh, coming into their hands. Too many in my uh, view, but uh, still not a big threat to France's democracy. What is at stake at the moment is really how people view uh, Hollande's uh, performance in the in the first two years of his mandate, and what can he do? I think people are already, political commentators and analysts are already beyond the second round of the voting because now is you know we're waiting to see what's going to happen on Monday. Uh, very likely a reshuffle of the cabinet. Whether it includes a change of prime minister is not obvious. Uh, you know, in, in, in the French uh, political system, uh, the president is elected for five years. Uh, if, if he changes prime minister now, it's a one shot. 
uh, he cannot change again before the end of his mandate. He isn't, he's not even at halfway through his mandate. So he'd better uh, wait until next year to change prime minister and have a fresh prime minister for the last road to the next presidential elections. Because he knows already that the next three elections will be lost. He has European elections in May, he has senatorial elections uh, in the fall, and he has regional elections uh, in next spring. All three will be lost by the left, whatever happens, even if unemployment is down to zero, which is almost uh, obviously Not impossible. Uh, and so uh, it's only at the end of that cycle that he has more interest in changing the prime minister. But, but we're obviously, talking about, we're talking about you, you're talking about the interest of the president, and, and that's typically Hollande. He is a calculator, and so what serves me best? What serves the country? Because frankly, changing prime ministers in a significant way now might convince people that possibly there will be enough changes that they can rely on, and they could start uh, uh, trusting the economy a bit more. No, and that in itself be, needs points of growth. But let's, let's be serious. The president has, has set the, the, a goal, a, a new policy, only three months ago. Yes. Uh, and you think that uh, uh, only three months later is going to make a U-turn? He's not going to change policy. Uh, but first nobody first of all, knows first what of his all, policy he, is anymore. First, first of all, I think he sincerely believes it's the right policy. He has the support of uh, uh, whatever you say. He has the support of l large sections of the employers, of the of, On principle, of, of companies. But not in the way and, it's and being secondly, done. And uh, secondly, I think it would be irresponsible for him to uh, uh, change uh, course after setting a new course after uh, uh, less than three months I, afterwards because I'm he lost local course. elections. That that would be. I'm not talking uh, that, about that a That doesn't course. make sense. I'm talking about the feeling that something is actually being done because already we do not know exactly what the calculations are about this new pacte de responsabilité, this new supposedly more liberal U-turn, uh, liberal uh, French uh, free uh, um, uh, French It's not only that, it's also the 50 billion euro uh, cuts in the, the spending same, over the next three years, which is a huge, a huge but I change. Don't, I don't think there's any kind of visibility because this government so far, and it still does it today, has taken decisions and then rescinded them when they proved to be unpopular. And then he's made exceptions. And then they said they would get rid of niche. And then they replaced them by other niche. And so I think there's a complete lack of visibility and a complete yes, lack why, of trust. That's and why I, I agree that in terms of policy, they've, they've tried everything from the left to the right, going right. That's perfectly true. That's why true. I think he's not but going to change prime minister, but he's going to right, have a, it's a, 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 so it's a, Mr. a better Blair working power. government. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, uh, what's going to be the takeaway uh, of these local elections? Is it the historic inroads of the far right, or is it the change of prime minister that may or may not come? Uh, that's a re I'm, I'm not a political prognosticator, and forgive me for dodging your question because I don't know the answer. But I would like to Artfully. ask a question. But I would like to ask <laughs> a question. Since we're in the realm of hypotheticals here, you said that e the, the left is going to lose the next three elections, next three regional and local elections, mm -hmm. and the European elections, even if unemployment goes down to zero. Let's assume unemployment went down to zero. Let's assume that these job creation and labor stimulating uh, and economy stimulating measures somehow or other worked. Why wouldn't the socialists win everything after? Why wouldn't they run the table? No, what I, what I meant is that in, it's impossible that uh, the figures look so good within the next year. Uh, but okay. if unemployment goes down to zero, Hollande is re-elected in 2017 uh, yeah, well, okay. for a second mandate. Yeah. I mean, uh, with 70% with uh, of the vote, you know, I yeah, mean, cause, it's, cause it's that's obvious. The, that's the that's issue. The key. We're, that's the key. We're talking about the national front. We're talking about is Hollande sure. going to lose his prime minister. The people in France, as you said, what's good for the people? The people in France want to know when the economy is going to get moving again, when their kids can get jobs. Yeah. I disagree. I'll take the torch from you so that I can answer your question. Okay. So it's around. <laughs> the, what, what I'm most concerned about, I'm a new uh, Parisian, is, is the Front National. It's the fact, and it's not just the Front National getting all these votes and actually on the first round uh, in, in France. It's, it's the far right in Europe. This is something that's going on in Greece. This is something that's going on in Austria, in the Netherlands. And bringing it back to something you said about trust, I think people are losing the trust into the system, and so they are going to whatever person they are seeing, sorry, very close to them, and it's happening to be the, the, the far right in the EU system we have now, and this is very, very dangerous. All right, and the National Front once again insisting it's now a mainstream party. 
The most significant thing to come out of this huge success for our movement is that the National Front is not simply a national force. We're now a powerful local force, a vote that will take root across the Republic to provide an alternative for the future. They were fielding only 600 uh, uh, candidates at 600 cities, and there are and towns that there are 36,000 cities and towns in France. So, uh, of course, she's quite right of pushing it, but you know, pull the other one. That's not true. In, in, if you look at the figures, the general figures polled by the National Front in the first round were a little over five percent. Now, this is because they were not fielding enough people locally. They, you know, the local average is something between 10 and 12, yeah, those and it's gone up to 35, 40 in some places that were very well known. But it's not very different but from Elizabeth, last year. But there's, yeah. a, there's a deeper problem beyond yes. those numbers, which is uh, you go to dinner parties in Paris or whatever, there are people now who tell you openly they vote National Front, yeah. which you didn't have before. And oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, you did. You Sure. De sure. Yeah, it depends who you dine with. Well, <laughs> you know, not, you, there was always somebody in the room who was saying, you know, maybe they couched it, maybe it wasn't. No, but, Maybe it but, was a far right party with a, a kind of a little little bit of uh, dressing on it, but, but they were, the, the politics deeper, were very very yeah. conservative. No, but they the were about is, it. Wait, 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 wait. One, one big <laughs> thing about one big thing about the National Front. We have essentially elites who tell the people when the people vote in a way that they don't like, the people is wrong, like bottle brushed, change peoples. <laughs> and this is this is a big mistake. You've got whole swathes, the French population, who are completely disenfranchised. And I'm not talking about the banlieue, because actually everybody has got, you know, the spotlight on the banlieue. I'm talking about what the is known as peri-urban. We're talking about white people in the countryside. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people who are without jobs in whole areas where the jobs are not coming back. And these people are not listened to because they don't riot. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they don't, uh, they, they don't, but they feel that nobody is paying them any kind of attention. And they've got exactly the same kind of commedia dell'arte being played by all those civil servants who come from a very narrow section of society. You've got this French government school, you know, you know this, they're called ENA, which has uh, something like seven out of 12 prime ministers, three presidents, uh, most of the leaders of the French, uh, the four, 40 largest companies. And they have a way of talking, they have a way of addressing in a very technocratic problems they have no human uh, element in in the way they express themselves and there's a feeling that they're being despised uh, Marine Le Pen is a great marketer she has no political right. she's a great marketer she talks to them in a way that they can understand and she has hired people from the left most of the people <coughs> who are now voting for the National Front come from the left. And that's something that we've seen in other countries, including in America. The makeup of the French uh, main, mainstream parties are bourgeois, and the people who vote for the National Front are working class. I think you have to go beyond the National Front. I think the, yes. the real tragedy at the moment is people who don't trust the system, who yes. don't tr believe anymore in the system, and they are far beyond the, the National Front. People who don't yes. go to vote, yes. uh, uh, who abstain, who, who feel that voting is, is becoming useless, they don't vote for the National Front. They just uh, move oh, okay. one step behind, and that's a, a, a very uh, serious uh, problem uh, for the there French society. Record, there was a and, record abstention in the, in, in, the, in the first round. Yes. I want to move on. It wasn't just Obama visiting this old continent of ours this week. A welcome fit for a king at the Palace of Versailles on Thursday. Xi Jinping in France for three days, marking 50 years since General de Gaulle and Chairman Mao established uh, formal ties. In three days, the man hailed by some as China's most transformative leader since Deng Xiaoping, getting a real taste of France. Mm, Pierre Aski, I'm looking at these pictures, I think... He likes the wine better than the cheese. What do you? What, 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 what? Well, you might have noticed that just before he arrived in Paris, uh, China dropped the investigation it had on European wine. You know, as part of the uh, trade uh, disputes, uh, so uh, he's enjoying the the, the benefits of. Uh, uh, Still have to work on him for the cheese, I think. <laughs> yes, it's definitely. Very but Chinese. but the charcuterie, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, the charcuterie uh, has been allowed uh, entry into China for the first time. So. Uh, we we are we have a lot of uh, room, but I think it's it was very very interesting visit, and I think uh, you know the 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 way 
Hollande handled it. Uh, there was not a single false note, not a, a, a word about Tibet or about uh, Liu Xiaobo. Where, whereas uh, this Friday, Angela and, Merkel took him to task over press yes, censorship. Yes, absolutely. But France is not in the same position. The mm. rapport de force, the balance of power between yeah. France and China is not the same as, as Germany and China. Mm. And so the 18 billion euro that Xi Jinping left in uh, orders to the French economy are, are just, uh, uh, I mean, compare that with, with what we were discussing uh, five minutes ago about the crisis in France, uh, is something uh, very significant. And I think politically too, uh, we are at the, at the moment of defining relations in the world. You know, uh, it's very interesting that China abstained in the uh, Security Council on the vote on Crimea. Uh, uh, Russia was probably hoping for support, you know, a veto from China as well. They voted together on Syria on several occasions. Uh, there's a very strong political relationship between Beijing and, and, and Moscow. And all of a sudden, on an issue which is obviously very important to Russia, China abstains. So uh, uh, that was also part of the background scene to, to this visit. And what was interesting was to hear uh, the Chinese president himself, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, with an allusion to the soft power that France still holds when he gave a speech. Napoleon said, China is a sleeping lion. When one day it wakes up, the world will shiver. Today, this line has awoken. It's peaceful, friendly, and civilized. And Bag of Mary. Sounds to me like if anybody doesn't uh, want to do business with Vladimir Putin, they could do business with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> They've, they, China and they has, do. China has a lot of money. You know, why should we worry? Why should Visa and MasterCard worry about a few uh, bills from Russia when they can start their marketing effort in the East? I'm, I'm only half kidding. Um, they this whole, this mm -hmm. whole visit. Well, there, well, there's a, there was a remark made recently by the last governor of Hong Kong, Chris Patton, who said that besides gas and vodka, what do we trade with Russia, whereas with China? Plenty. Now, this, this whole business, this whole visit was about, was about money. As you point out, 18 billion euros in, in commercial accords. I mean, the trade deficit with, uh, between France and China is 25.8 billion euros. So that goes a long way to, to closing the gap. And, of course, nobody mentioned nasty things like politics. I mean, uh, the, the French government uh, is reading from the same script as the American government when China comes to call. You don't mention Tibet. You don't mention the Dalai Lama. These people are people we have to do business with. And, um, sure, I, I, think, uh, I think Xi Jinping is, is uh, a modern leader in many senses. He has definitely got a great staff advising him just exactly what tone to strike. He even ate dinner that Alain Ducasse cooked. And believe me, the Chinese don't really like rich food. So I, I imagine uh, when we're one talking of, about the of aftermath France's of the most visit, famous chefs, yeah. Sure. His wife didn't, though. She refused both the wine and the, and the saucisson. Ah, uh, I don't know if she refused Alain Ducasse's cooking, though. I have no I idea. Agree. I agree with Anne, and also for me, this whole three-day visit was the art of diplomacy pure. You know, it's, it, it's, there's, the, there's the wine and there's the cheese, there's the handshake, but there's also the signature of 50 Absolutely. deals, and there's also the 80, 18 billion euros that, that comes in. It's, it, it was the perfect, and do not mention the red flag topic. So this was a very successful diplomatic visit, 100%. The, the French can still put on a spread. And uh, China, you are the masters. <laughs> China was the guest at the Art Paris Art Fair. I mean, you know, they, they pull all the stuff, also the artistic ones. It was very elegantly done. All right, did you get any signs, Piraski, of what kind of a man Xi Jinping is? He's the most powerful Chinese leader since Deng Xiaoping. He has uh, accumulated uh, immense powers that his two predecessors had to share in a more collective uh, type of leadership. And, and it's, it, it, it looks from his uh, body language, you know, the way he behaves, he's, uh, he's definitely more assured, more uh, personal in his uh, uh, way of, of handling uh, business with the other leaders than uh, Jiang Zemin or Hu Jintao, where, who were uh, halfway between the old style of Chinese leadership and modern leadership. Uh, Xi Jinping is definitely in a new category. Uh, 
also his wife is obviously uh, the uh, soft power asset of, of China. Uh, only last week there was this uh, meeting between Michelle Obama and uh, Peng Liyuan. It was a, a quite an amazing summit in China. Uh, I know that Xi Jinping's staff has been studying Michelle Obama's uh, uh, films, uh, fashion, uh, everything she's been doing for the past few years. And, and there's a lot of uh, lessons that they got from, from this. So, so I think you have the first real uh, super class leader from China. It doesn't mean that he has an easy task at home because his economy has gone down. Uh, uh, the uh, stability of China is, is certainly less assured than it was a few years ago. Or, or whether he'll reform, but that, of course, will be a discussion for another time. Pierre Haski, I want to thank you. I want to thank Anne Berger Murray. And Elisabeth Moutet and Aïssa Gulsert, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us here in The World This Week. <laughs>